Hello Internet, it is I, the Roshi, and I'm back with another reaction. This time, it's Every Single Warhammer 40k Faction Explained Part 2 by Bricky. And I'm really looking forward to getting into this. It's going to be about Xenos and Chaos, and that just sounds cool. So I'm happy to be learning more about Warhammer, and I'm super grateful for you guys in the comments giving me more suggestions and lore dumps and other information, and that's awesome. Thank you so much for those suggestions and recommendations and everything else. I'm looking forward to getting into all that. However, I will probably admit that I'm going to be reacting to Bricky's third video focusing on the Space Marine chapters. So I will be doing that first before I get into your suggestions, but keep them coming. I really appreciate it and it means a lot. If you haven't done so already, please go over to Bricky's channel and give him a like and a subscribe and support him for making these videos. A lot of time and effort goes into those and you need to support the original creators. Uh, and when you're done doing that, if you like, please come back, give me a like and a subscribe because that shows me that you're interested in my content and I will continue doing things like this. And with all that being said, let's start the reaction. Take it away, Bricky. Hey all, this is part two in a two-part series on the Warhammer races. If you haven't seen part one yet, we do the Imperium of Man. You can check that out in the description, and I highly recommend you watch that to get context for this episode. Please if go you check it have, out. Go ahead and keep on watching. So after an entire episode of nothing but humans, we can now talk about chaos, which involves humans again. More humans! A little bit less. We also got demons and shit. Demons and humans! Grab my ass! What? Like hard, Nick. <laughs> so as I've mentioned many times before, we've discussed the warp, the immaterium, the hellish landscape, the purgatory dimension realm between the material realm of our existence. Now in the warp, it's terrifying, horrible. There are demons everywhere. Things are crazy. All your minds and thoughts and emotions get projected there. It is both formless and empty. It is vast and tiny. It uh, obeys the laws of time and physics while simultaneously does absolutely nothing of the sort it is a hodgepodge and a culmination of just unknowable eldritch horrifying shit and there are four gods that permeate in chaos and the warp these are the, the four, four major chaos gods and if we wish to learn about chaos we need to learn about each and every single one of these chaos gods first up we have corn and he is the easiest corn is your classic satan he is all about anger, murder, fighting, blood, guts, death. You ever heard the term blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne? That's Korn. The okay, real quick. I've heard blood for the blood god, like that quote, I from like so long ago. I had no idea for the longest time that was Warhammer related. I had no clue where that came from. I didn't even think about where that came from, but I remember being a lot younger than I am now and hearing like that being said as like a reference or a joke or whatever that is. I didn't know it was Warhammer. So in recent years, finding that out, that was really cool to me. I don't know why it was cool, but it just was. Whenever you find like the origin of something that's just kind of been in your life here and there it, it's always interesting to be like oh it's from that oh shit so i don't know blood for the blood god skull for the skull thrones right on the whole idea is that he is all about the fury and strength of battle mm. he doesn't care where blood comes from so long as blood is flowing he wants to fight and murder and carnage and slaughter and death 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 yeah. that is corn very simple to understand. Next up, you have Zeech, and Zeech is the god of change. However, okay. the god of change, it permeates in so many different other ways. He's the most eldritch of all the demon gods. He has it. this weird way to always be plucking at the strings of the universe. He's always conniving and scheming and doing his best to cause as much little bullshit as he can. Zeech is, is unknowable. Everything that makes sense, he will and won't do. Mm. Every future and setting and every type of, of destiny or fate is all foretold and also changeable. It is set in stone while also completely random. He knows what everything is going to happen and also that none of it's going to happen. 
you would ask Zeech a question. And that question leads to three more questions. And those questions lead to the heat death of the universe, which asks four answers to those questions. And then he thinks to himself, what are questions even really? And are you even asking the questions? Or are you simply giving paths to answers and, and other horseshit? Zeech is just, <laughs> I'm going to fuck with stuff. He is yes and he is no. He is the understanding and he is complexity. He is unknowable. And that's what the God of Change is about. Very bizarre. And he likes birds a lot. I don't, I don't know why. Next up, we got Papa Nurgle. Okay, real quick. Zeech, uh, I, I think I would like Zeech. I don't know. I, I kind of I like that, that, that mind fuckery um, at the same time. He just definitely feels like if if he was in Magic the Gathering, he would definitely be a, a blue deck. And blue decks are freaking annoying to deal with. Um, I do respect them, though. But Zeech, yeah, I feel like if Zeech was a child, he would be that little kid that would keep asking why. You know, I could get an answer. You're, you're, the kids give it an answer, and it's like, but why? Oh, because of this. But why? Because of this. Why? Because of this. Why? Just because. Anyway, Papa Nurgle, let's go. Papa Nurgle, he loves you for who you are. Probably not. He will murder you just the same. But oh. Papa Nurgle is about rot, pestilence, death, and decay. He is the end of everything. Him and Zeech do not like each other very much because where Zeech represents change and adjustment, Nurgle represents stagnation and death. He yeah. is all about miasma and pestilence and large bloat and pus and, and organs and people just being sedentary, sloth. He is the idea that everything will rot and decay and die. Nothing is certain besides decay and death. Yeah. All of us will end up the same way and broken down Ew. through just sheer never ending decomposition. So the joke that Nurgle always loves you is generally because of that, because we all end up the same. We all rot and we all die and wither. That's Nurgle, and he's got a general theme of, of course, pestilence and and different kinds of diseases and sickness mm -hmm. and things of that nature. That's generally Nurgle. He's pretty easy to understand as well, and he's he, he chonk. Finally, we have the young. <laughs> he chonk. Yeah, uh, man. In a Nurgle, it feels like I I kind of have like a love hate relationship with because I hate the idea of being stagnant, of just the, the idea, I think that's why I'm more of a Zeech person, because I like the idea of there is constantly change and choosing your own path. Meanwhile, Nurgle's just kind of like, yeah, you just you just end up this way. And it's going to be the same process as everything else. Like you, this, this is just, this is it. There is no hope. <laughs> uh, at the same time, the fact that. But why I say love hate? is because he also mentions, like, you know, it's about death. And, I don't know, I'm, I'm cool with that concept. The idea of death doesn't bother me. But it's, it's just the fact that, like, you will rot to get there. You will be diseased. You will crumble. It's like, eh, I mean, I don't know. You could be vaporized? That's a little different. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking too much about it, I think of the chaos gods and that is Slanesh, also known as the prince of pleasure or the god mm -hmm. of unspeakable excess Slanesh is generally referred to with sex but it's not only sex it's just that's a good avenue if you want to make stuff Slanesh is just the idea of the senses of the body being cranked to not just 11 but more like 17. oh that's See, we'll pretty high. a little bit more when we talk about the eldar because they done fucked up but she <laughs> he Sorry it or whatever is mainly about just the excess of emotions and therefore sex is generally oh. a large part of it however it's mostly pain and torture 
lots of pain, torture, but sometimes sexually related or drug related. Thing lots of drugs. Lots of drugs. Sonesh gets off on everything. Extremes in happiness, extremes in sadness, okay. extremes in pain and sadism and masochism. And of course that goes along with the sex part of it as well. It's generally referred to with sex because of the color scheme, very purple, lots of exposed genitalia. A lot of their models have like exposed nipples and stuff. And that is generally the theme. So, what I understand is that I need to start collecting Slanesh models. That's all I heard. You go for from a physical side, but it really embodies everything. Mainly pain and also the, the excessive amounts of emotion. So when it comes down to it, you'll find a lot of them have Ooh. things like spikes or whips or any kind of BDSM style gear because it is unspeakable excess the prince of pleasure everything in excess to the point where it is just sheer frightening that is slanesh in a nutshell a little bit bizarre and a little hard to describe sometimes Oof. but as we talk more about the dark eldar layer in this video you'll understand it far far better and far more than you'd want to now you might okay. be thinking why would anyone ever want to join chaos they all look horrifying screwed up and just frightening things right yeah tell well, us Bricky. the thing is is that of course one your mind is put into the warp and the materium mm -hmm. so you can be easily swayed by chaos demons when you get into your head mm -hmm. especially if you're a psyker sometimes regiments of the less mentally strong people whether they be civilians or say low-level guardsmen or conscripts can be easily swayed by this and become chaos cultists and stuff Oof. and they serve their dark gods and whatever god they personally refer However, and this might seem strange, chaos in their own right isn't necessarily evil. See, the warp is every manifestation of emotion and being, every mm -hmm. soul, every thing of existence. This includes all the good things. All the different chaos gods have another side to their coin. Korn might be death, murder, slaughter, slaughter, but he's also got this weird sense of survival of the fittest, trial by combat, and honor. Corn will never mm. lie to you. Corn okay. will never stab you in the back. Corn isn't about conniving and scheming. Corn is about straight up mono e mono, you versus me, get in the ring. We're going to murder each other hard right now. It may not be a good thing at the end of the day, but it is that other side of the coin. Him and Zeech generally don't get along mm -hmm. because Zeech is that conniving schemer, but he's also about the idea of hope. Ah. Where there is change, there is change for your predicament. That's what I said. Right? I think that's what I said. <laughs> that it sounds like because there's change, there is hope for something. Okay. That's right. All right. This is cool. How there are other sides to the, the coin, as, as Bricky said. Um, I never really thought about how guy who says blood for the blood gods, skulls for the skull throne, would also be honorable. But it makes sense if you're all about, like, trial by combat and just, like, showing off your strength it wouldn't be considered strength in that literal physical murder way if you went up to your opponent and stabbed them in the back it's not honorable it's it's not it's not the 1v1 that it seems like he's expressing that corn's all about so that makes that makes a lot of sense um and zeech here being all like yeah change and if there is change then there is also if there's the possibility of change then there's the possibility of hope so okay super cool uh this is a lot this there's a lot more to this than i guess i originally thought there would be the chaos gods are seeming pretty more more deep than i anticipated and that's that's pretty rad there is change for your problem the hope of the galaxy the ability to bend the world to your will the idea that your fate is not set in stone but in reality that you control your own destiny and can control it whenever you want the changer of ways that is zeech and of course zeech and nurgle hate each other mm -hmm. because while nurgle does represent stagnation death and decay right. he also represents finality okay ending. the fact yep. that you can be mentally at peace knowing that you will end and how you will end fear of the unknown okay. fear of change is not present with nurgle with nurgle everything will rot and die and that provides that finality that ability that this is over we are all the same and we will all end the same we know the meaning of life the meaning of life is to live and die and rot 
and with that, it brings peace of mind. Slanesh is a lot more simple. Hey. While they are the excess of emotion, they are also the representation of emotion. Slanesh embodies mm -hmm. happiness. Slanesh embodies excitement and joy and pleasure, not only in the sense of the physical, you know, bam style of pleasure, but also everything else like food and drink and uh, air on your cheek and sunlight, the feeling, emotion and feeling. All of that is also represented with Slanesh. So you have to ask, why are they always represented as super evil skulls and spikes on everything and mm. want to murder everybody? I don't really got an answer for you on that one. <laughs> My assumption is that because mentally humans may think worse thoughts, even if we don't act on them and therefore they're projected in the warp more. That one's a little bit weird. I don't know. This is me spitballing right now, but I don't know. You need a, you need a super bad guy. You already got the Imperium of Man. You need somebody to be a little bit worse than them. So you got demons. Honestly, who cares? I just want to buy like a bird magician. Look at him. <laughs> So cool. That is so really combining cool. Combining all this together on the tabletop, chaos demons are generally very melee based. They run in, go really hard. You have lots of summoning and conjuring, tons of spells. Generally a little bit frail, but they have special saves to make them a little bit stronger. You've got giant demons and smaller demons. You got hordes of little boys and tons of big guys. Demons are as they seem. Demons. Nurgle is slow. Uh, Korn is super scary in melee. You've got Zeech, who are far more into psychers and spellcasting. And then Slanesh, who is all melee, really, really, really fast, but squishy, but in lots of hordes of tons of melee and, and pain damage, of course. So overall, the demons are a huge part of 40k and a massive threat to almost every single faction, with the, the exception of a couple. However, the big part about demons is also transferred into the other nine Primarchs we didn't talk about, which are the Chaos Space Marines. Okay, 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 okay. Really, really cool. I like how there are like two sides to the coin to look at them in different perspectives. Even though it's not technically the official reason why they're all designed that way, I really do like Bricky's take on how the warp where everyone's mental like is where it goes and unfortunately negative thoughts go to the surface like a lot with people a lot of people are fucking negative i can definitely see that being a thing with a lot of people in this world of warhammer 40k where nothing is okay there are a, it's like negative thoughts with every person to the fucking max and that is going to create some heinous shit that's just going to kind of float in this warp that creates this warp whatever that is it makes sense for this universe yeah i kind of lost my train of thought what i'm saying is i like bricky's take at the end of the day just go and get yourself a bird magician pretty cool chaos astartes So Horse and all of his boys, all of them in the Primarchs, they have all also become Chaos Boys. And they all have their own special Chaos Legions, specializing in so many different things, just like the Adeptus Astartes, the Angels of Death, the regular Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines aren't a whole lot different than the regular Space Marines. They have the same armor, generally the same training and toughness. They just specialize in different kinds of things. And also a lot of the Primarchs have ascended into greater de- is it greater Ooh. demons? They're demon primarchs at this point. Gigantic, That's horrifying man-demon hybrids that are pretty awesome, if I'm going to be honest. Ooh. That look really, really cool. But them and their associated legions that they are a part of are all kind of going out there and causing a large ruckus big boy. for everyone else. Considering the raw strength and firepower of a legion of space marines, imagine that entire legion just converting to chaos and immediately fighting you. It's generally pretty horrifying. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them, so I gotta write them down. But you've got the Emperor's Children with Primarch Fulgrim, loyal to Slanesh. These people, they are some messed up. People. I don't really They're like their face. Sensory overload, tons of drugs, tons of torture. Okay. And I think Fulgrim is a demon Primarch right now. And oh god, I am terrified to see what that man looks like. Like a At snake. least on the tabletop, because 
Emperor's children are. Not good people. You've got the Iron Warriors, which are kind of like opposite of the Imperial Fists with Primarch Perturabo, I believe is his name. They're Chaos Undivided. They just kind of serve Chaos in a general aspect instead of choosing one of the four. But the Iron Warriors are big on the siege and fortification, and they're basically entirely against the Imperial Fists and are a major rival. Perturabo, I believe, is also still alive, and I'm also very interested to see what he looks like because mm. Demon Primarchs are badass. You've got the Night Lords with Primarch Conrad Kerr, Conrad Kurz is dead, which is good because he's a sick fuck. But the <laughs> Night Lords are generally about terror, terrorizing people and terrorism. They're generally about fear and broadly so. You've got the World Eaters with I imagine Primark the majority Angron, of them are pretty still sick. alive. Also excited to see. Angron, if you think you've known an angry person, Angron is the angriest son of a bitch you will ever know. Angron removed parts of his brain that didn't make him angry so he could be angrier. But... Angron. Okay. Mad. He's got Death Guard <laughs> with Primarch and They actually have their own special codex and their own oh. major army on the tabletop. Okay. Mortarian himself is actually one of the Whoa. models. And, and look at him. Look at him. It's so cool looking. Of course, Nurgle based, obviously. So very slow, That's... but very tanky. You got oh, the cool. word bearers with Primarch Lorgar. Lorgar is, I believe, still alive. I don't know what's up with him at the current moment, but the word bearers are generally the people who caused all the major problems in the beginning. At least I blame them for it. They're little assholes. You got the Black Legion with Primarch Horus. Get fucked, nerd. You've got the Alpha <laughs> Legion with Primarch Alpharius Omegon. Chaos, I think. And then finally, you've got huh. the Thousand Sons with Primarch Magnus the Nerd. Uh, the Thousand Sons also have their own book, just like the Death Guard. Magnus is also a tabletop model. Ooh. He looks super cool, as you can tell. And they're all super heavily Psyker and kind of Egyptian themed. They look pretty neat, mm. but overall, with all of these Chaos Space Marine factions, you can play as a lot of a lot of different ones, but the main ones that you can really work at are standard Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, as well as the Death Guard and Thousand Suns, as they are the most fleshed out, especially on the tabletop, at least. See, this right here, this is a really good way to describe the Chaos Space Marines. What the thick-headed fools with their broken corpse of an emperor fail to understand is that not only can they never defeat us, but they cannot hide or flee or shield themselves from the triumph of chaos. They are finite and we are unbound, undivided. They must not err or they shall fall to heresy. All who fall join our cause. Every imperial fool who dares to open his eyes is a willing recruit. They strive merely to hold back our fury and might, and it consumes them. Thus, you can see chaos is inevitable. We lurk not only beyond their grasp and at their gates, we lurk within the darkness of their souls, on the tip of their tongues, in their tortured dreams. We are them, but freed from the shackles of ignorance. We are them, grown strong, evolved. We are them, but so much more. Mm. As hardcore as that quote is, the saddest part is they're mostly right. <laughs> Chaos is basically unkillable. Yeah. You can probably get rid of Space Marines a decent amount, the Chaos Space Marines, that is. But every soul that dies goes to the warp. Every Chaos soul will end up back in the warp. Wow. And depending on how hard you killed them, they will come back at some point. Every demon you banish will return at some point. Chaos is unstoppable. The warp is unending. And while maybe there is at some point some way to stop them somehow, the resources to do so, the requirements to do so, are so far beyond the reaches of man and the other races at the current moment that really it's just an unstoppable force that just keeps on coming and is just barely being slowed. Chaos is by far the biggest threat. They are without number, their legions are everywhere, mm -hmm. and yeah, they're pretty scary. So, I promise, we're done with humans now. Let's talk about some Xenos. Okay. Um, yeah, that... <sighs> it makes sense. Um, chaos. It, how are you gonna get rid of that? As long as there are people killing each other. You got Corn and Nurgle out there. I mean, as long as there, if there's death in general, you got Nurgle, right? people asking questions philosophy trying to carve their own path in life you got zeech's interest right emotion in general 
Slanesh. Uh, and, you know, and they're going, and it's demons versus the Imperium of Man, and I, and I know this is the future, and there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on, but if everyone is connected to this warp, and people are people, and some people are easily swayed more than others, not everyone has the strongest of wills, not everyone is a space marine or, like, a, a gray knight with unbreakable mental fortitude. Yeah, humanity's kind of screwed! Like, long, long term, long game, kind of, kind of screwed. Um, they would need to find a way to completely somehow cut off the warp. And I don't think that is a possible thing since they're all technically connected to it. But that's really cool. Uh, yeah, moving on to Xeno stuff. We have the Eldar here. So let's talk about the Eldar, or also known as the Eldari, which are a super hyper-specialized and very technologically advanced race of, well, elf people. They were, as well, responsible for the creation of Slanesh, the newest demon god. How'd they do that? Debauchery on a world-ending scale. See, back in the day, it was just Korn's each yeah. and Nurgle. And the Eldar are very, very ancient millions of years these eldar however have a bit of a sensory problem you know every kind of pain or feeling that you have is a little bit amplified compared to the normal mm. however with eldar as their race advanced so excessively and they became so re self-reliant and everything became so easy there was no requirement for food production anymore there was no shortages everything was basically done everyone was so comfortable and that comfort breeded this weird sedation and that sedation breeded the requirement for more and more debauchery 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 <laughs> debauchery when everything you have can be so can easily it. acquired you will end up down this road of pure debauchery Ugh. all of the senses the eldar had that were so powerful things like feeling happiness sadness and just evil and good all needed to be satisfied and satiated and the desire to satiate these senses grew more and more with worse and worse debauchery it started off with things like sex and drugs becoming so much more rampant because of these are the first things you generally turn to when requirements for living are so easily just no elf legs. it would get to the point <laughs> like that what? made sander cohen and bioshock look sane all right this is the kind of debauchery it led to it was constantly satisfying and satiating these sexual and sadistic or masochistic fantasies that only elevated and elevated. And this was species wide. People started going down darker, more depraved and more violent paths as time went on. However, some people didn't entirely take to that. Some of the Eldar were looking at this depraved species that they had become and said, I no thanks for me, dog. I'm good. And they bailed. These are the craft world Eldar. They left on these giant continent-sized starships called craft worlds. They believed in learning the old ways of the Eldar and pushing away from this depravity and debauchery and going back to their main roots. And so they would segment themselves on these giant craft worlds far in the outer reaches of space. They even had this thing called the Webway. Remember what we mentioned about warp travel with the Imperium? Yes. Well, the Eldar had something way safer called a Webway. And the Eldar Webway is actually like a pocket dimension kind of thing. And in that pocket dimension, there were also more horrible, depraved groups and clans that would spend their time in there. Mm. And if you imagine the debauchery was bad already, these were debauchery X10. So all of this continued, and it continued, and it bloated until Slanesh just burst forth. All that emotion, all that mental, well, thought processes, I suppose, all of this in such a condensed space. Don't forget, this is all being shot, all their souls as well, into the warp. All this depravity right into the warp. So what happened? Boom. Slanesh was birthed and killed off 90% of the entire Eldar population. Untold trillions 
trillions have their a lot. souls ripped from their bodies and their actual fleshy bodies devoured by Slanesh demons. The entirety of the Eldar race was eaten alive and their souls consumed to the Prince of Pleasure. All of them got fucked up. It was so bad that it literally ripped a warp hole into the fabric of the materium called the eye of terror uh -huh. that's literally this like quasi horrifying gateway portal from the materium and the immaterium right next to cadia <laughs> okay 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 uh, real, real quick um i know this video is probably going long that that's okay it's it's fine um okay so i think i remember reading in the comments a while back uh that I, I didn't make the connection like why Cadia exploded um and things like that um but I did hear that Cadia was kind of the first line of defense for the Imperium of Man against this Eye of Terror um I I will admit that I do know a little bit about this that he's talking about how the Eldar created Slanesh, I do kind of know about that because that ties into some uh, Necron stuff that I, I that I am aware of. Uh, talk about that later, uh, but the um, I, for some reason I'm, I'm I'm just connecting the dots now with the, with the comments that I've read that you guys left and. Cadia, the Eye of Terror, and relatively like how close these things are and related to each other. Um, it's things are connecting. Anyway, sorry. So this Slanesh, also known as She Who Thirsts by the Eldar, ah. slaughtered the entire population except for a couple. Those in the craft worlds were actually not affected by this as they were so far in the reaches of the galaxy. That crazy crack, that birth of Sonesh only affected the ones in the center. So these craft world Eldar were able to escape, but Sonesh got their sights on them. Mm. Every time an Eldar will die, their soul doesn't just pass into the warp naturally. It goes straight to Slanesh, Ooh, craft world or not. Yeah. What about those people in the webway? That's right. Well, imagine that giant birth happening, but they were only able to just barely get a grasp onto you. Slanesh was just barely able to hold on. These people are the Dark Eldar, mm. or also known as the Drukhari. The Eldar population right now is so massively small. It is minuscule compared to any of the other, pop well, most of the other populations in the universe. The Eldar are consistently having issues trying to get their population up because as their souls are constantly being hungered by from Sonesh, they realize their entire species is doomed mm. and they understand it very well since the time of the fall our race has been haunted by what we in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence gave birth to though our dreams once overturned worlds and quenched suns we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence all the stars in the sky cannot blot out the hateful glare of the red moon's eye the birthing place of the great enemy pulses with all the malice of a demon that is dreaming, casting its shadow over all we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the runes leads me to this time, to this place, and it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds. A conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Monkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son is coming and all my steps lead towards it no matter that i walk other paths i see the stars stain red with the blood of the monkai and though their wars do not concern me i would gladly let them destroy one another i know that to avoid this fight is to condemn my race to inevitable doom and though all i see is darkness i know that i will not flinch from my destiny and now let's talk about cute plastic models bro i'm straight up not Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that that's a lot. Um, it's really interesting how, like, just the level of acceptance that the Eldar have, 
but they were such an advanced society and they fucked it up on like it's the biggest fuck up you could make you had a perfect society and you ruined it and now you're destined to go to hell and it's to the point where it's unsalvageable but you still you still live and do what you can i guess once again warhammer 40k all about fighting those losing battles oh <sighs> all right let's talk about the fun cute models having a good time the first playable race we have for the Eldar are the Craft World Eldar and living in those Craft World starships I mentioned earlier. And each of them have their own kind of Craft World, almost like a Space Marine Legion. Each Craft World is it in itself its own special kind of group. And the Eldar themselves are very fast and rely a lot on trickery. They are squishy, a bit weak, but they're very in tune as psychers. Tons of psychers across the entire Eldar population, and their weaponry and abilities are fast and extremely hard hitting, but of course rather fragile. Understanding an Eldar's brain is an exercise in futility. They are all over the place in confusion and trickery on a whole galactic scale. They fight weird, they think weirder, and Eldar in their own right really rely on this to keep their species alive. They need to think about deception and the strangeness of what they do if they truly want to not be immediately murdered and slaughtered wholesale thanks to their entirely small population. However, I must say that it seems like their population is getting slightly better. These craft worlds hold millions upon millions of people. And as they continually, you know, reproduce and have their craft worlds expand, losing a few people in battle, while hurts a lot, they aren't really losing what's extremely precious to them. It's not like every single death means the death of their species. It seems like they're kind of on the upturn a little bit. They're still okay. a doomed race being sucked into Sardesh yeah. every time someone dies, but they are definitely doing a little bit better than they were before. Eldar are fast, cunning, and what they don't make up for in tankiness, they make up for in extremely advanced weaponry. Mm. They also call humans Monkai, which is something I mentioned earlier. Um, that is a derogatory slur for humans in the Warhammer world. Um, why is it called Monkai? Well, it's because you can't, in your game, call people monkeys. You can, but you probably shouldn't. On the tabletop, exactly <laughs> what I said. Not very tanky, generally pretty squishy, hit like trucks, and move at Mach 5. Fast, hit hard, die fast. Exactly how it sounds. They've been good for a very long time, too. We bring only death and leave only carry on. It is a message even a human can understand mm -hmm. eldar so drukari okay before we get into drukari um i would like to know what uh, as great as bricky's video is there's a couple things he describes and i know it's because he can't spend the time to get into the intricacies the deep the super details of exactly how things play out um and that's and that's fine no no shade on bricky but how do the Eldar actually play? Because they're described as uh, they're weird and they play even weirder or, or whatever that was. But then you have from the previous video, the, the Admech, the Adeptus Mechanicus, where they also were weird and played weird. So what kind of weirds are we talking about? The Eldar aren't, aren't tanky and that they move a lot so are they just super fast on the battlefield and that's what makes them weird or is there something else more to it and with the admech is it something similar or is it a different kind of weird with like how their weapons work even though the eldar also have advanced weaponry so i'm just curious if anyone uh if it's possible to explain that in like simple terms so you don't have to write a novel um why would they be classified as like a weird playing style how do they play out how does it actually work in game it's cool but yeah anyway dark eldar let's talk about the dark eldar on today's episode of how fucked up is fucked up 
guys fucked up. So <laughs> those people I mentioned in the webway, in the <laughs> super deranged cults and the depraved people of the Eldar, in the webway, they didn't quite get a hold onto them. So Nash like has them, but it has them on like by the pinky finger. And they're slowly being consumed by Slanesh, but they found out they can stave her off by doing Slanesh things. Oh. The Dark Eldar are by far the worst, most horrifying, disgusting, depraved, and brutal race in all of Warhammer 40k. These are entirely a group of people whose full purpose to save their species from extinction, to go into planets, raid them, and take as many slaves as they possibly can to torture them for one, five, 10, 20, a million years. It's pretty because BM. that torture will keep them from dying. They look very BDSM style too. They definitely have a lot more spiky bits and they have a lot more of that kind of leathery black look to them. But let's, example, let's say you are an upstanding Imperial citizen, living life on a regular planet. You get invaded by the Necrons. The Necrons will shoot you with a de-atomizer and you will be destroyed in a millisecond and that's it. Very kind. Not the worst way to go. Uh, you are invaded by Chaos Marines or something. You take a bolter shot to the head or a chain sword across your stomach and ah. you get cut in half. Painful, but not the worst. Uh, the orcs quick. arrive. They beat you to death. Hurts, but, you know, whatever. Tyranids, yeah, they great. eat you alive. Terrifying. Rough. The Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar. Uh, this is going to get a little graphic. I apologize. You pray you die. You don't. Oh. You are instead taken as a human slave. Your life will be endless work and agony 24-7. They will make sure you can't not die as your pain satisfies them. They will hook you up to all manner of torture devices. They will inject pain-based like stimuli drugs directly into your nervous system. They will slowly run razor blades across your skin. They will flay you and just pull out your teeth and your fingernails one by one. They will remove your appendages and your skin and wait for it to grow back so they can do it again. They will murder and torture and use the R word that rhymes with grape your entire family in front of you and do the exact same thing to them. You yourself will also be rhymes with grape anywhere and everywhere possible. And this will occur for 20 years until you are no longer satisfying to them. And then you will be contorted, crushed, and twisted into some form of trophy, a fleshy trophy or a ring or a couch or a TV stand or perhaps a wonderful hat while you are, of course, still alive and breathing, and you will become a moaning, fleshy trophy for eternity. And that is what happens when you are taken by the Dark Eldar. They are the most depraved, most horrifying race in all of 40K. They look the part, and they do it so they all don't die. They are literally forced to do this, because if they don't, Slaanesh's grip will get harder, and they will have their souls pulled away. So long as they keep doing this, Slaanesh is like, you're doing good, man. You're doing solid. You keep, you keep that shit up, you elf-eared bastards. That's, that's, the, that's the Dark Eldar. That's mm. the Drakari. They are horrible. On the tabletop, they're actually kind of like Eldar, but more extreme. They are even squishier than the Eldar, right. but they hit generally even harder. Fast attacks, skirmishers, Ooh. really quick, speedy, like get around them, do a lot of damage, get away kind of stuff. That's most of the Dark Eldar. Look up the definition of grim dark in a dictionary. You'll find a picture of the Dark Eldar and Sev from Republic Commando. A quote from uh, Mr. Vect. We are the lords of despair, masters of terror, dread and agony are our meat and wine, and they are plentiful indeed. Dark Eldar. Let's talk about the Harlequins. Okay. Clowns. Okay, real quick. Uh, Dark Eldar. Freaking horrifying. Like terrible. Like I, I, I knew that based on what he was talking about before, that they would be more fucked up and deprived and things like that. Boy, it's a lot. 
it, it I did like I did like their kind of theme though with like their ships. They look very like space piratey. That's kind of cool. Kind of dig that. But uh mannerisms overall there's no like we said there's not really any good guys in 40k, but you know, that's um that's pretty evil. And I do remember actually fighting them in some missions when I played Inquisitor Martyr and uh them having like uh, torture rooms and stuff that you'd go through and blast them and yeah 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 okay moving on harlequins the harlequins are a bizarre race of eldar they're demonic clown performers they're like a weird mix of Sander Cohen from Bioshock and Jin from League of Legends, but in a more clown theme. They're, they're artists of death and perfectors of their craft. They do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird Drukhari people. They guard something called the Black Library, which is this giant tome of never-ending knowledge deep in the heart of the Eldar webway, and also guarded by their god named Kegarok, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He is the laughing god. but. It's the Eldar's laughing god? Mm -hmm. And these are the Harlequins, the Harlequin clowns. These are Eldar clowns, okay? So imagine the things that an Eldar, these depraved individuals, mm -hmm. would find funny. And this is the god of that. It's it's a horror clown. These are gods of horror it's it. for us normal people. <laughs> for them, they're like, oh, 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 it's so funny. They're all dying horribly. <laughs> Oh, honk, honk. They're very bizarre oh, and honk. difficult to describe. Uh, they've escaped the ruinous powers of Slaanesh somehow, but their main thing is guarding that black library, and the Harlequins just... They're demon clown performers. They're barely any models on the tabletop. They're mm. good in melee. They're, they're demon clowns. I, I'm not sure. I, I got a quote. Yeah. It is too easy for an Eldar to embrace the obscene virtues of chaos, for Slaanesh is nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar, and to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whim. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. They're very strange. The Harlequins, Drukhari, Eldar, they are an anomaly that make humans seem completely easy to understand in comparison. They range from rekindling their civilization to horrifying murder and also clowns. They're all over the place, <laughs> but honestly, they represent quite well and are rather interesting, especially with the whole Slaanesh murdering everyone bit. So, yeah, Eldar. Now, bugs. Okay. Huh? All right, all right, all right. So this has gone on for quite some time. I think we're going to uh, end it here. But real quick, my thoughts on Eldar in general. Love their lore. Their lore is cool. Uh, the craft world Eldar. You got your Drukhari, your, your Dark Elves, and then you got this weird, like, off-to-the-side faction, which are just crazy demonic elf clowns. I, I do think it's weird how they're not affected by Slaanesh in a way, but if they have their own god, maybe that has something to do with them being protected in some way, shape, or form. But it is really interesting how, at least with the Harlequins, that it is that whole like there's an artistry to to this um yeah eldar super cool like the, the the chaos space marines really cool chaos in general is super interesting i learned a lot from watching this and i'm really excited to get to this next half so right now we're gonna end it here thank you so much for watching once again, please go and support Bricky if you haven't already. And if you like my reaction to this, uh, you know, leave some comments down below. Answer some of the questions I may have asked or enlighten me if I was maybe off off track with something. Uh, and if you like the video, please leave a like so I know that you liked it. And if you're not subscribed, then consider doing that as well. Because like I said before, that supports me and motivates me to make more of this kind of content. So. Thank you so much for joining me. Catch you next time.
shine on you crazy diamonds. Later.